So people, this is what filming in the summer looks like. I was sweating out my makeup, sweating out my hair. I even have a heat brush on my neck in this video. Hopefully I don't look too bad. <laughs> How the summer are treating them? Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Pink Aviatrix. Like, subscribe, comment and share my videos if you have been enjoying my content so far. Today's video is a little bit of a different kind of mood because I will be sharing um, me speaking at a safety and recognition meeting held at my flight school monthly to recognize on one hand and highlight safety issues on the other hand. So I had an incident where I was coming back from my first solo cross country flight and I was basically battling bad weather and had basically a bad landing. And I think it's important to share stories like these because other people will be able to learn from it and potentially learn how they could better plan for such scenarios. So take a look. How is everybody? Okay, um, well, the last time I was here, I was on this stage being recognized for um, my first solo, which is exciting and everybody wants to celebrate what is good. Um, and so I thought, based on the advice of Christian, with much prodding, much coaxing <laughs> for me to come and talk about this, um, that we should also talk about some of the things that are not so good, some of the things that we're not necessarily so proud of, but something that other people can learn from. So, um, if you look behind you, November that's my doing. Um, you would call it was a prop strike and like the nose wheel was bent under. And just to give you an overview, I was doing my first solo cross country. And uh, on the return, I was advised that there was thunderstorms and lightning, wind was shifting, all sorts of things. Like everything that needed to happen for an accident like that to happen. Um, and what it was, was that I made a decision and I stuck to it, which was to land the airplane because at the time, based on my experience and the situation itself, I thought the best option was to land the airplane because, uh, let me just try to paint a picture for you. Um, it's there? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I don't know if, for most of you who have been flying already, you know the approach to one zero right, um, one zero left is here, one zero right is here, and how it was is that there was a thunderstorm cell with lightnings on the approach end of one zero left, and on the approach side of one zero right, there was a huge thunderstorm cell, one I couldn't see through. So I figured that doing a go around would put me in the heart of that because I don't know if you're aware, like the downwind and base like of once you're right would have been like right in the middle of that. So I tried my best to land. Um, I did consider a go around, but at the time I was not gonna go back into gusting winds. Um, and the thing is, usually the controllers won't call you on final or on short final, but if there's something important that they have to tell you, they will call you. So I was called three or four times and advised of the winds, the thunderstorms, the lightning, everything, and I was like, yes, I can see it. And you know, I began talking to myself, talking to God, talking to the plane. I was like, yes, we can make this because the other option of going back into the thunderstorm was like not on my list of things to do. Um, so yeah, then right over the threshold, I did my round out. Um, and even even though all those things were going on, I still thought I'd had it. It wasn't until after the airplane touched the runway the second time that I realized that this is not happening. Um, because there was a little bounce, and then I tried to fix it by adding a little power, and then it just went, and then ended in the runway like that. Um, but yeah, suffice it to say, there are so many things that I, when I replay it, I realize that maybe that would not have been the best day to go flying because I was delayed in the morning um, and so I was late coming back from my cross country and if most of you know, the time when the weather builds up around here is like around 1, 2 o'clock and I was out by the trailer park at 3 minutes past 1. 
So I was expecting it, but I just thought, you know, I could navigate through it. Um, so that's also one thing to consider. If you're super delayed on your start, maybe, I'm not saying to be scared of cats, but it's something to think about because you might have to plan a different route. And also one thing I learned from it as well, also that there is an option of a go around, but additionally, you must always have an alternate. And that's one of the required pre-fight actions that you're supposed to adhere to as well. Um, where even if you're not required by law to file a, an alternate airport, you should be familiar with the airports in the area so that if anything happens, it doesn't have to be a go around to try and land again. It could be a go around to look for somewhere else to land. Because in my case, I left a plane on the runway. What if I was coming to land and there was a plane on the runway and the airport was closed? So that's also something to think about. But yeah, I, at no point did I ever think I don't want to fly anymore. It was a very stressful situation. I cried, I cried, I cried. <laughs> but um, I'm getting over it now. And I've flown four times since. I'm still no solo yet, but um, I'm working my way back to it. And yeah, at no point did I ever want to stop flying. So, I mean, that's a plus. Yeah, anyway, that's my opinion. So the whole purpose of this video is to help others to plan properly, um, ensure that you have an alternate airport, and basically start out early. You don't want to get delayed in the morning or whatever time it is that you're supposed to fly. Uh, do everything possible to get out early, and if you are delayed for more than half an hour and even 15 minutes in some cases because you never know what the weather is like. Well, you should know what the weather is like because you did your flight planning, right? Um, but yeah, you sometimes you, the weather changes suddenly and any little delays could make the difference between you coming in and landing nice and easily like every other day or you coming and having a bad landing. And another thing I want to encourage other young pilots to do, which something it's something that we did um, in flight school here in Jamaica. Um, we didn't really go into it in detail. Um, in the flight school I went to overseas but it's important to watch accident or incident cases read the FAA's website so that you can get an idea of the types of incidents or accidents that could happen as a pilot and how not to or how to go about it if you should run into a similar situation I know it might be a little morbid and it it might actually make you cry because when I was at flight school in Jamaica and we would watch cases, we went through a range of emotions from sadness to anger to just just really being really being sad or wondering why they happened. It's important to watch them so you can learn because through your entire aviation career, you may never have a certain incident or while you're training, you may never have a certain incident but you could be prepared for the situation from watching and reviewing and reading case reports so that you are prepared in the event that a situation like what is presented happened to you. Cut. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. Yeah, like it. <laughs> subscribe leave me a comment in the comment section below tell me about any aircraft incidents you may have had and share my videos if you feel like it will be helpful to other people thanks for watching no? No.